in today's video I'm going to talk about the choice I made for the coolant pump for the Precision Matthews 727M. As you recall with the G0602 build I decided to build my own coolant pump and tank out of parts that I scrounged up at my local Home Depot and Harbor Freight. I used a small coolant uh, pond pump and a bucket. Now that worked really well for the G0602 because it's a lathe and it doesn't need a lot of pressure uh, or flow. So it works really good on the lathe, but for the Precision Matthews, I decided to go a little bit different route and just purchase a pump and a tank already made. So let's talk about some of the choices I had. I found uh, quite a few of these plastic tanks on eBay. Uh, this little small one here, it's only 9 liter, uh, which is not very big. Also, the plastic tank, I was a little skeptical of the plastic tank. I didn't know how that was going to uh, be affected over time. Uh, this one's $155 plus $35, $36 shipping. So by the time you get it home to you, it's, you know, around $200. So I didn't think that was a very good deal. However, I do like the uh, industrial pump. Now these pumps range in around $85. I also looked at ones from Enco, Bolton, and Grizzly. Uh, this one is 213 with free shipping from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for those of you interested in this. Um, next, I looked at Enco. Now for those of you who do not know this, uh, Enco was purchased by MSC and so sooner or later Enco, their website is going to be shut down. Has the nice industrial pump motor that I was looking for. Uh, it's a 10 gallon tank which is at least twice as much as I was interested in but the price is $168 plus about $38 shipping so you're still looking in the $200 range. If you go to MSC's website they have the exact same coolant pump and tank for $294 plus shipping so you can see that Prices are going to increase when Enco switches over to MSC, so beware of that. Now this particular particular pump and tank here uh, was my third choice. Um, the price is great, however 10 gallons is just way more than I would want. Uh, my second choice was the Grizzly at 7 gallons. Uh, this particular model comes with the switch hose, everything you need to just put, fill it up, plug it up and start using it, which is really nice. But the choice I decided to go with is the Bolton Tools 3.4 gallon tank. The tank that I'm using on the lathe, the G0602, I've only got about a gallon of fluid in there and it works great. Um, so I thought somewhere around three to five gallons would be good and this fits the bill perfectly now this is 235 from Amazon with free shipping it comes in uh, single phase and also a three phase version if you'd like to have that and this is the choice that I decided to go with and it arrived yesterday so let's take a look in it. I mean the box didn't look too bad but hey what you got so we have the drain hose here which goes through the hole and then it goes into this tray Now 
and the tray sits down into the tank here. You can see we got a good dent right here on the bottom of this tray. The seam is busted here. This lip is dented and it looks like this portion right here, which is a baffle I guess, is also dented. Uh, this tray was really one of the main reasons I wanted this one because it has this screen in. So when it goes down in here, it filters out a portion of the coolant. So it's like a pre-filter. Now let's see how the rest of it fared. This is the Bolton Tools CS 3.4 gallon. Magnetic line lock. exactly how they got this thing in here. Switch, which I won't be using this switch. It'll be getting switched from Mach 3. Okay, so here's the coolant pump, 110 or 240 volts, single phase. I'll check the wiring and see what it's set up for. This all seems to be metal. So it mounts like so. And about a six foot hose for the coolant. Like I said, it comes with a magnetic base. I probably won't use this. I'll end up using something else, but I can use this on the G0602 and replace the one that I made. Spring-loaded handles on the side. Now inside the tank, another feature that I liked has this baffle right here. And that keeps any sediment that falls in the tank away from the pump. That's a nice feature that I liked about this particular tank. Now, it says it's 3.4 gallons. And to me that seems, uh, it looks really small. But I guess that's about right. Let's get some dimensions. It's 15 inches long. 10 inches wide and eight and a half inches deep. I'm really disappointed with the tray. Um, yeah, but like I said, the tray is one of the features that I really liked about this particular pump. Uh, you can get the same setup pretty much with um, the plastic tanks and I'm sure they're fine but I really like this screen situation here um, and I'm going to try to straighten this out I'm going to definitely contact Bolton but I'm going to try to straighten this out so we'll see I'm going to get this hooked up I will go into the wiring make sure it's correct according to the wiring schematic they sent for 110 volts
All right. Have a little run start capacitor here. Okay, so it has these little bands on the wiring here. We have V1. W2. And U2. U2. V1 and W2 connected. V1, W2. So this particular motor is set up for one phase 220 volts and we need to change it over to one phase 110 volts. So it comes with the plug for 220 volts. And I've got to change it to a 110 volt plug. But luckily for me, I always save these cords. You never know when you're going to use these, so I always save them to have for situations like this. So we'll take this box apart, see what we've got inside here. See how they've got it wired. So you've got your white and your black coming in on this side of the switch white and black and then brown and it turns into brown and gray for your hot and your neutral and then the blue is ground which is green so blue turns into the ground so I marked it on the sheet here And you can see how it's connected. So if you're going to bypass this switch, then uh, you can just wire it directly to the motor. Okay, so we have our blue. Which is our ground. brown which is our black and our gray which is our neutral okay so let me pull those through Put the cover back on this so I'll know that that's where my neutral goes, white. And black over here. To black. Okay, pull those wires through. Take this off. Set that aside. My wire run it through. Okay. All right, I'm going to put a crimp on right there. Okay, for our neutral. Our ground, sorry. Right. 
our lack goes there. here U2 and U2 V2 and W1 U2 V2 and W1 go to the capacitor and that goes out to brown or black in our case and the neutral goes to U, V and W2 U, V1 and W2 all right, that should be good. Let's again get this tucked in there. Now, we have it just wired straight to the plug. Now, by doing it like this, of course, we don't have a switch. But remember, this is going to plug into my control cabinet. And the control cabinet will switch the coolant on and off through Mach 3. All right. Now that we've got it hooked up, I just want to plug it in and see if it turns on. Seems to be working. Uh, let's see if we can. All right, so you can see that it works. All right, so now I'm gonna bolt this into the base and we'll be good to go. Put some coolant in there and uh, in the next video, we'll test it out and uh, see how well she does so thanks for watching the video please feel free to comment if you have any questions thumbs up if you like the video please subscribe and most importantly be safe